Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to teach you how you can add fake blur or haze to your photos in Adobe Photoshop. This is a new feature they added in the recent versions of Photoshop and they utilize AI in order to achieve this effect, which is not only more efficient, but probably better than doing this yourself. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and let's get straight into it. Before we get started, this video is sponsored by Envato Elements, which is a perfect marketplace for anyone who uses Photoshop or Premiere Pro. There are millions of different templates you can use in your projects. Some of my favorite are the Photoshop actions that help speed up my workflow. You get access to millions of templates for a small monthly fee. So if you want to check that out, make sure to click the link in the description. So right here we have a photo of me. And as you can see in the background, although there is some sort of blur, it's not a crazy amount of blur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exaggerate the blur as well as add some haze and show you some of the features of this effect. So you want to first import your photo, go over to filter, go over to neural filters, and then there should be a tab that opens. You want to keep in mind that this does take up a lot of RAM. So you might need a decent computer in order to achieve this effect and have it run smoothly. And it takes longer to process this effect depending on what settings you tweak. The less you do, the faster this actually runs. So you want to go over to all filters and under beta, there should be something called depth blur. And so because it's in beta, this is actually going to get better. They're going to continue to improve this. But basically you want to toggle on depth blur. And at first there'll be focus subject check. If you want to manually select the focus, you can do that. But because there's only one subject, I don't think it's that hard for them to actually determine what subject it is. Maybe if you have like three subjects or if you want to focus on a certain part of a body, maybe like an eye, then you might want to select the focus subject. Or maybe you just want to adjust the focal distance and focal range. But let's just say I want to focus on my upper body, maybe my face. I would just click and then you can see right here, it creates a point. The focal distance will basically adjust how deep the blur is. So a lower focal distance will basically achieve a more subtle blur, whereas a higher focal distance will have a really compressed, really deep blur. As for focal range, I would assume this is how widespread the blur is, if it's concentrated or not. But I'm just going to leave this as default because you can just adjust the blur strength, if anything. So let me just uh, increase the blur strength and add some haze in this. So now you can actually see that the haze appears really subtly, actually it looks pretty good. So if you zoom in, you can see that they missed this little bit of this little fabric around here as well. But personally, it does a really good job. You can see here around the sweater, it does it perfectly. And you can see as it gets closer, the blur sort of like dissipates. And basically how they achieve this is they create a depth map. So if you press output depth map only, you can actually see what they do. So the darker areas are closer to you and the darker areas don't get as much blur as like the white areas. So I would assume that the white area is completely blurry depending on the blur strength, whereas the darker areas don't get blur at all. So you can see what I said reflects with this. You can see as the steps get closer to the camera, they also get darker. And that's why there's no blur at the front right here. So you can see there's a big difference between these two. And let's just say by adding haze, the photo becomes too cool or warm because the haze is like white you might want to adjust the temperature a little bit so that's what i'm going to do and then once we're done we can press output to new layer there's also other options for how you can output this so you can output this on the current layer which might not be a good choice because then you can't adjust the opacity or you can't go back to the original layer you can export it as a new layer so this way you can have the original and the new layer you can also have the new layer masked so by doing this, you have a mask as well. So you can adjust that or you can have a smart filter or you can have this in a new document. Personally, I think the best option is new layer because you can adjust the opacity and essentially the strength of this effect. So what I mean is now you have the original and the edited version. So if later you determine that there's too much blur, you can just lower the opacity. As with the other options, you would not be able to do that. And you can also just hide it if you want. So with the haze, what you might want to do is increase the contrast later on because it does sort of dull out the image. So I'm going to add this brightness and contrast filter and I'm going to create a clipping mask so that it only applies to the top layer. And I'm going to increase the contrast. And next, I'm going to highlight both of these and press Command G or Control G to create a group. And now you can see the before and after. And personally, I think this looks really nice, especially if there's some sort of light that is coming across this photo. That way the haze in the blur looks a little bit more emphasized. Whereas if you just had a flat photo, whereas this photo, because there's some sort of depth and lighting, it would look fine. 
But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you out. If it did, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. You can check out the promotion that Adobe is having right now, where if you're a student or teacher, you can get over 60% off the entire Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. Also check out my Discord channel in the link in the description if you want to connect with different creators. But other than that, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.